All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Retro Hoop Collectibles. Um, been away for a little bit, taking care of some personal stuff, but we are back in a sense uh, with <laughs> with a really, really interesting uh, conversation that I'm going to have today with a great guy. Um, if you have not watched, I will link down in the description the link uh, to the video um, that uh, the live stream that is kind of the bulk of the conversation that we're having today. Uh, and uh, so that way you guys can check it out, kind of preface everything, because uh, part of the conversation that I'm going to be having today uh, with Ty uh, from Chasing Cardboard. Make sure I get my hat right there. Make sure this is nice and nice and visible here. Um, and uh, part of the conversation that we're going to have is going to have a lot to do with the context of that live stream. And if you haven't watched it, do yourself a favor, because this is going to be a very interesting set of comments and questions that we're going to have here. So without further ado, welcome in, Mr. Hi. Ty. I love the hat. You are a... Listen, let me tell you something. There is a an art. There is an art to the... There is an art of detail, right? And when you sent me this hat, I was in love with the hat to begin with. But as detailed as you are, not only did you give me the hat, but you gave me, these are number two hundred. There's only a hundred of these. You gave me number 34 of Why 100. do you think I did that, huh? Well, but of course. I mean, it's, I mean, it's like, it's, it's right here, right? Like, you know, I'm an Hakeem Olajuwon guy and that's the beauty of detail. That's ladies and gentlemen, how you handle details. So thank you for that. Beautiful. You're welcome. Also, I have my uh, chasing cardboard sticker. Look at you. Old, on the old mic stand. <laughs> just to make sure that it's all official what's up what's going on man it's going it's going i'm super excited to talk to you i when we when we talked about doing this i thought man we haven't talked in a while anyway yes it's only correct. fitting that we talk about this that is correct yeah and you knew this was gonna be just right up my alley oh man. the text <laughs> i got from you since then have been they've been good <laughs> they've been really good <laughs> thanks for so having again, me for those of you who haven't watched yet the link is down in the description uh, this is going to be released after the live stream. So the link to the live stream is going to be down in the description. I highly encourage you guys to take a look at that and then come back. But make sure you come back because this is a very supplemental conversation that we're going to have here. About yeah, this. So right. um, let's talk about a few things because like you said, we haven't had a chance to catch up and chat. Uh, sure. Chasing Cardboard, you guys yeah. absolutely killing it. I And I beg, I, mean, I, I, I challenge anyone to go into the last maybe two years of YouTube content and find me a better produced and a more enjoyable set of hobby content that's out there right now. Uh, and and I, I, I put Chasing Cardboard up against all of that because I don't think anybody else is doing it. Um, so congratulations just on you guys putting that together. They, a lot of people don't understand the amount of labor that goes behind that. Yeah. Uh, and how many episodes deep? We are, we just released episode 30 wow. uh, and, and the live stream was both about the issue that we're going to talk about and also a celebration that we got to episode 30. You're right, man. Like you, people don't realize the amount of work that goes into going on the road to film just a single episode. Yeah. You know, it's a couple days on the road. It's multiple weeks of editing. It's a lot of just personal flair and touch added in. It's the process of selling to make everything work with yeah. the numbers behind the scenes. Yeah. Matt, I cannot speak highly enough of Matt Coleman. Matt is the, uh, he is an unbelievable talent uh, yeah. as a producer of the show. Reed on camera, Marcel and Mike as co-hosts. It's just a fun team, man. So, so thanks yeah. for the props. I appreciate that. Yeah, for sure. So 30 episodes in, man, that's, it just seems like you guys launched like yesterday and you know, yeah. 30 yeah. episodes in, that's a lot of content. Like you said, there's a lot of work involved. Uh, and so that's good, man. How, how many do you guys have like, an idea of what your what your goal is to get to are you just guys going to continue to ride this thing as long as like you said it continues to the, the numbers continue to make sense right or is there is there an end goal here or or are you just riding the wave yeah when we started we we put the first three together and we thought man it was so hard to film these first three hopefully we can make it to 10 and we'd be like that's a season or a season and a half that would feel like an accomplishment and then we got to 10 and we're like well let's get to 20 
And then we get the next 10 out to 30. So now, and now we already have the next five done so that we already have 30. Oh, wow. uh, we, the next five are already being edited right now and they're outstanding. Uh, and they're all different. The thing is like, if it was the same thing over and over again, it would probably get monotonous and boring, but people are just so unique, man. Everybody we run into, it's like, man, they're just the personality of collectors runs really deep. Yeah. Uh, and it's just fun to uh, like uncover that, unpack that for people to see. So yeah. who knows? Who knows? We have some interesting things in the, t in the, in the works right now uh, with partnerships and stuff. So I can't talk about it, but I think it's going to be really sure. good. It's going to accelerate things even more. That sounds awesome. Well, that's a good, that's good news for those of us who are rabid consumers of that content. Cause it's like you said, there's a different, I think mainly, I mean, obviously the, the way you guys produce it, frame it, put it out. Like you said, the personal flair, the style in, in which you guys do it. I was a huge, huge American Pickers fan. Yeah. So naturally, very much in that same DNA, right, of how you guys put the stories together. And the reason why I'm such a, I was such a big American Pickers fan, I still am, uh, uh, was because of the way they told the stories. So yeah. A good storyteller is always going to captivate your attention and imagination. And I think that's what you guys do well as well, is, is tell the story and really highlight the person and the collection and how they yeah. came to the collection and ultimately what they plan on doing it and then also i've noticed that lately you guys have been doing a lot of um kind of cautionary tales almost if if i want to call them that way because you guys have been doing a lot of like oh this is 2018 2019 2020 2021 now you want to dump it yeah it's like i just i don't have anything for you man this is this is you know and you guys have been pretty adamant about telling that story right of like there's a lot of this, right? Yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of guys that got in at 19, 2019, 2020 that bought heavily into the, into the, um, uh, the, the ultra modern stuff that now they're looking for a way out. And yeah. unfortunately they're just, there really isn't how, how much, how much of a difference are you guys seeing in that? Has that rose in a lot? Uh, it has, it has risen a lot. Let me have a number there. Uh, <laughs> My, my wife, <laughs> being wants to correct it, but you, I'm going to correct. <laughs> uh, it has it, it to the point where it's like, we're almost 90% of the things that come in, we're almost screening it. And we have to kindly say, Hey, look, this is not a good fit for us. Yeah. Uh, but when there's something we think might be really good to, to tell, we'll go see it. But I mean, there's two things about what you just said. One, the story is the most important thing. So the, the more people end up thinking about me or Mike or Marcel, Mm -hmm. the the poorer job that I think we did. They should leave. We should be the vehicles for us to tell the story and they yeah. shouldn't be thinking about me. They should be thinking about what they just saw with the story. But the, on the flip side of that, we are resellers at the end of the day. Like we resell a ton. I run a ridiculously large eBay business that uh, has to run, has to work. So we have to make good deals or it does none of this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like you have to tell them the cold hard truth of this stuff will not sell. And if yeah. it does, it is fractions of what you think that is the reality yeah and if you can get anybody to give you any kind of money for it take it exactly you know, it's because it, i've seen some of the guys on there they're like i think the last one that you guys did where he was like i need 50 grand and you're like yeah what where yeah. well that's what i spent and it's like oh buddy you know it's like 50 grand huh okay well <laughs> and i can kind of see it in your face and you're just like oh you know yeah, you know, we're near that, buddy. This is maybe 10 grand, 15 grand tops, right? For sure. Yeah. And, and you want to respect them, right? Because they, they put their money into it and that's their little baby. And, and I, I do respect that. I, I, we've been there, done that. We've made a lot right. of bad decisions in the hobby over the, over the course of the last few decades. Yeah. So I, I totally can sympathize with that. And you want to treat people right. But man, that, those are tough to swallow. You tell, you yeah. just want to be like, dude, come on. It's not even in the same, it's not even the same planet as yeah. what it should be. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are pretty good at being gracious about that because I I have a horrible <laughs> poker face, which is <laughs> which is why like but funny enough like if I if I go because I, I was taught how to wheel and deal by car dealers right so I'm a car guy right so I'm I'm buying and I'm buying and selling cars all the time and buying projects and stuff like that all the time and so I, I've been pretty good about like you know like if I see like a perfect car that I'm like <gasps> like not to get to like not to show that poker face. Yeah, but in anything else, I'm just like the worst. I, I'll, I'll show my cards. I'll like, you know, I'm horrible at negotiating, which is funny enough because I, I can I can wheel and deal on a car. Anything else, 
I'm toast, man, which is why I'm glad I'm, I'm not on really on the selling side of things anymore. But, yeah. you know, we'll see how that goes. But uh, it, it, it makes it tough, though, man, negotiating when you're on camera and, and knowing like we want people to, to see the reality of it. Right. So and you can look up a comp while you're watching our show. So right. I know when I'm negotiating with somebody, I have to react with a good attitude and treat them right because I'm going to sure. be I'm going to be held accountable to that when, when it's shown. And so when you don't have a camera on you, you can be a little more aggressive and you can, and not that you're going to rip people off, but right. you don't have to sit there and know like everything's going to be looked up. Scrutinized. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah that, can, that can be a so like, like a little bit of added pressure. And then the other thing too, is that like, you know, if, if, if you later on in the future, you end up contacting anybody th th there's a, there's a running, there's a running list of all the negotiations you've ever done that they can go back and go, well, this guy's a jerk. I'm not going to deal with him. He, he look, look at the way he treated that guy. Yeah, no way. You know yeah. what I mean? But totally. if you guys are fair and you're giving good deals and you're being honest and you're being graceful and say, listen, yeah. man, you know, that kind of thing. I think ultimately, especially for folks that want to unload like those, like those big collections that really are worth some money. You know, I know several times you guys have, have dealt with some of those on consignment where you've, you've uh, helped people out where you go, listen, yeah. I can give you 30 grand right now. That's what I'll give you. However, mm -hmm. if you can sign it to me and let me really massage this thing out for you, you know, we can we can we can net you some more money. And ultimately, yeah. that's what we want to do. Right. And so you, you guys have steered some people in some right directions. And that's going to play towards your 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 brand going forward. Right. As as like, well, no, these guys are here to help. Right. As opposed to they're just not here to rip my face off, as Gary Vee would say. <laughs> which is always interesting to me. <laughs> I love that guy, man, but he's like, you know, he's like, I'm gonna rip his face off. It's like, well, he's five, right? And you just rip his face off on a Moana uh, plushie. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> let's, let's be a little more graceful here, right? Yeah. It wouldn't Speaking be of, an official sports card interview podcast without mentioning Gary Vee. So check him out. Gary, that's right. So I got, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. For those of you playing bingo, right? Like the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the sports card interview uh, bingo that you go ahead and check that one out. Um, you mentioned the, the selling side of things is what keeps the whole machine going, right? Yeah. Um, recently, I've recently got into, you know, I, I have quite a bit of bulk uh, that I've acquired over, you know, because I, I like, it's kind of crappy, but I like to open packs and boxes like, uh, you know, Panini kind of got me in that sense. But um, you like to enjoy ripping packs? Who are dude. you? Okay, just so before I even get into my story, the last three years, if you're a basketball fan, you know why I've been ripping packs the last four years or the last three years. It's because my Rockets have been absolute crap the last four years, and we've had extremely high draft picks the last four years. And essentially the whole entire draft class that we've had, we've had a top five pick in every single of the last three drafts. So, yeah. I, you know, I'm high on all these guys, right? Like on all these young guys that are coming in that are ultimately going to move on to maybe bring a third championship to Houston. And I want to collect their uh, their rookie cards. And so the cheapest way to do that would be to rip some packs and hopefully hit something cool. But yeah, I'm trying to find out that that's not the case. But <laughs> in that sense, what I've done is I've accumulated quite a, quite a bit of cards that I'm now selling on eBay. And okay. I opened up my eBay store and loaded up, I don't know, about 100, 150 cards. And we're off to the races, man. I was selling five, six cards a day. I'd come home every day after work and I'd look and I'd get paid for three or four cards. I'm like, man, this is all right. Like I could see where people, you know, could really do something, make a living at this kind of stuff. And then just like two weeks into it, man, it just dropped off the face of the earth. Like I didn't get a single <laughs> click. I didn't get a single <laughs> offer, yeah. nothing. And it was the same cards, right? What's the, what's the, what's the one thing that if you had to just, you know, cook it down to one thing that you would say, you absolutely have to be doing this in order to have some level of success on eBay. What would you say that is? Consistency. It's consistency. And I would think of it consistency plus one, like commit yourself to a, a number of items that you're going to get listed every single day. And then at the end of the day, add one more. Oh, consistency you know? of listing. A hundred percent. The only way you grow a store the way you want to eBay is if you get the algorithm working for you because in the sports car world, as you know, there is a million listings that get lost in just the shuffle. Yes. Yeah. You got to rise to the top and eBay will reward you for being consistent. That would be my first and probably the most important tip. Interesting. Uh, yeah. And, so and, and a little trick on that is if you're going to spend one evening listening to a bunch of stuff, just have them scheduled to release throughout the week, five a day, 10 a day, and it'll kick in the algorithm in your favor. 
Uh, and eBay will be right. like, oh, Omar's kicking some butt here. Let's promote his store a little bit more. And you'll start to see things work. Okay. So that's what – shout out to my guy, JD. He does that quite a bit where he, he spreads out the listings. But I was like, well, I'm just going I'm just going for the big number. I'm going bulk, right? I'm going to do 100 cards in one shot. Boom, we're going to list them all. We're just going to throw them up on the store, and that's, and that's going to last me for the next two or three weeks. And then, nope. It was hot like fire for like three weeks, and then – it just dumped off completely, and I was like, "What the hell, man?" I, I, I was ready. I was ready to quit the day job and everything, man. I was like, "Man, this is awesome." If I, if I'm selling three or four cards a day with only a hundred cards listed, man. If I, if I list ten thousand, I could do thirty. Man, this is all right. Yeah. No. no. It, it just uh, fell off. You got to think of it like a boss would think of it, right? If you had an employee who worked his tail off for one day, you're like, "Okay, I'm gonna keep my eye on this dude." Ah. And then he didn't work for three weeks and then came back on to work. You'd be like, I'm not giving you a raise. I'm not going to, you know what? You're fired. I'm going to demote you. I'm going to demote you. That's where I think eBay looks at it. They're like, Omar has not touched eBay for three weeks. That dude's not getting any promotion. <laughs> that's such a good way to look at it. I never thought about that because that's true. Essentially, you're working for eBay, right? I mean, yeah. you know, what incentive do they have to bump your store up if you're not going to list? Totally. They'd rather save that slot for somebody who's listing like a madman on a daily basis. Yeah. Interesting. There That's you go. Good, okay. All right. Well, we we, we are putting together some cool stuff for eBay resellers. Uh, wink, wink. So stay tuned. Uh, yeah. And you guys have already given out quite a bit of good information on the channel as well, right? I mean, I think you did an entire live stream yeah. that was strictly dedicated to um, – to talking about that, right? How you sell, some of the things that you do, some of the packaging that you use, the yeah. programs that you use for sorting cards and listing cards and, and you know, all that stuff. And that's, you know, that's all extremely helpful as well. So th there's a bunch oh. of stuff on, on you guys' channel already. I know, I think I've, I've, I've I, the live stream I was on um, that you guys did, I think you and, I want to say you and Marcel did one. We did. Or, yeah. And then, and then somebody else. And Bo, Bo from One Million oh, Cards. there you go. One. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, the he's one that uh, the thousand. What, what, what's his? Um, a million cubs, one million, million cubs. cubs. There you go. There you go. Yeah, he's he's a great resource for the community. If you're if you're into eBay selling on on sports cards or with sports cards, he is he is the guy. He is one of the definitely one of the guys. So good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. All right, a couple of ca catch up things that I wanted to get out of the way, and we got those out of the way. Now we're talking meat and potatoes, baby. Oh, okay. Because now. Listen, you've had me fired up since since the end of last week, all right? And this is, you know, I I I I, I said to my wife, my wife's guy, she's like, you, you know, you you go on tangents, so you know, write down your question, Martha. Listen, I'm just, I I don't work that way. <laughs> your wife up. is looking now for you, Omar. I'm fired up, and 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 I have to get it out in the way that it fired me up. So. A quick two-minute recap of what happened with the cards and how this whole thing unraveled. Right, you bought a you bought a collection. Mm -hmm. That collection contained, and what, it, it contained a couple other cards that really aren't in question right now. But it contained two 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 autographs by Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. Yep. Which, in and of itself, is very rare because he doesn't sign. A whole lot from what yeah. i understand uh and so these two cards were uh, you, you bought them as part of the collection you had it on good authority that they were authentic signatures mm -hmm. um you listed them on ebay as unauthentic no as um no coa no uh, no, no COA. correct there you go yeah. no so they had not been authenticated you listed them as such uh somebody wins the auction yep sends you an email and says hey um i sent pictures of the cards to PSA's quick opinion. They sent it to BGS. Just to BGS. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Thank you for yep. clarifying. They I sent it to BGS quick authentication service, which is like 10 bucks for like a two second review of a picture of a picture. And we'll get more into that in a second. Uh and they said it's not authentic. So I'm not paying. Cancel my order. Uh I'm not paying these are not authentic. Right. So you said okay fine. Cancel the order relisted them and that's when the shit storm happened mm -hmm. right so i think that guy was it that guy that went to 
um, the folks over at SCR and said, hey, I, I went to BGS. BGS said it was not authentic. I told him that BGS said it wasn't authentic. And he relisted them anyway. This guy's a scammer. Yeah. That, am, I, yeah. am I correct so far in the way that that's gone down? I don't know how he worded it, and I'm assuming he was the guy that reached out. I, I don't know those details, but yeah. Okay, well, you don't know those details, but somebody. somebody I, didn't, out. Yeah. I didn't know he had reached out. Okay. The, so, I think it was like a Wednesday night or a Thursday night. He We canceled the auction. He didn't pay for it. I canceled. All good, right? Yep. I, and I think he sent me a screenshot of it, and it was from Beckett, and it said, likely not to authenticate. Right. And, and I might even have responded back to him and said, like, they, they said likely not to. They didn't say it right. wasn't real. Right. Uh, and I said, but all good, right? Cancel. I blocked him. Anytime someone cancels an auction or doesn't pay, I immediately block the buyer. It's what I always ah, do. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, oh. you don't want to deal with people like that. Right? I just don't. I don't. I, I have, I have a limited amount of time. I don't want to deal with people who aren't paying. End of story right. for me. Right. Uh, Fair enough. So I blocked him. Well, the next morning or two mornings later, I don't even remember the timeline really. Um, I get a note on Twitter from uh, one of the guys at SCR. Okay. Asking about the Rock Auto. Didn't even think twice. My response to him, by the way, was I know the backstory of the card. I feel pretty strong about it. Right. I don't really care about what Beckett said. I I I trust Rick, who we bought yes. the collection from and where he got it from. Yeah. Uh so anyway, I, the tweet came in or the message came in. And I th- I actually thought he wanted to buy it first. And I was like, yeah. oh, shoot, he wants to buy it. I'll sell it direct to him. <laughs> I'll just sell the card yeah, direct yeah, to him. Yeah, 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 avoid the fees. Yeah. And then and then at the same time or within a few hours, he had sent a message on eBay too. Um, I responded back and just said, hey, look, uh, I, I relisted it. There's Here's a situation. If you want it, I'll sell it to you. Yeah, I don't have to even deal with this. Right. Genuinely thinking, not even connecting the dots in the moment, right. that they're probably trying to find a way to like get dirt. And, it's a and story. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I'm just like, whatever. I ended the auction thinking, you know what? I'm just not going to deal with it. I'll see if he wants to buy it. Uh, then the video comes out later that day. He never responds to me, by the way. I never get a response back in the moment from any of that. Like, I'm like, hey, dude, if you want it, you can have it. Uh, right. And if, if you send it and it gets authenticated, uh, all good, dude. Like, congratulations. Congratulations. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was that. And then the, the video released. And then I realized, okay, that. That's what that was. And you're like, ah, oh, okay, okay. So in the moment, uh, of course, anybody would get pretty upset. And I put out a video within 72 hours, just basically responding out of frustration. Right. Uh, I, everyone's jumping to conclusions. Right. Uh, you guys are crazy. Like, let me send these. I, I pulled it off. No one bought the thing. And oh, right. by the way, there's a second one that I never listed. Uh, right. I'll send them off to get authenticated. And if, it, if that may, if that auto is authentic, I'll give it away to somebody. Yeah. I, I just, <laughs> which, which was, by the way, which is so gangster, by the way, <laughs> it's like, like, all right guys, what the hell? Like, like typically a scammer is doing things for monetary reasons. Like th- th- this isn't what we're doing this for. Right. Like, I mean, like what, what, what do you guys think? We're just out here just scamming people. I, I, I run an entire show that's literally, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why would you risk, you know, the integrity of who you are and also all the hard work that you guys have put behind the show, the, the good word of, of Mike and Marcel and your production team. And like, yeah, over, over what, what a couple hundred bucks, like 60. It, it, yeah. <laughs> even worse. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. Right. Yeah. And that's, I think that's what bothered, that's what bothered the crap out of me ultimately. Yeah. A hundred percent. And like, I look, I'll be the first to admit, I've admit, I've admitted this multiple times. I am not perfect. I make multiple mistakes on eBay right. every year that I have to just figure out and learn. Yeah. Uh, and in the moment I probably should not have relisted the card. I'm, I am a hundred percent on board with, with, with saying that. Like I should yeah. not have relisted it. If there was a shadow of a doubt that it might not be real. I trusted Rick hardcore. Right. After all this happened, I did two things. I reached back out to Rick and I said, Yo, what's the backstory again on this? Can you connect yeah. me with where you got this? He immediately sent me like the receipts from it. The guy he bought it from, guy was on the road with like WWE. He yeah. felt really good about it. Guy has a hundred percent feedback on eBay. All right. he does is sell non COA autos. Uh, and then I went in and I unblocked the guy on eBay. And I just shot him a note and said, Yo, I I I know you reached out to SCR. I'm not going to say anything except. I'm sorry I overreacted with you. I should not have blocked you. Uh, I'm not upset with you, but that's that. I sent him like a care package 
with yeah, just yeah. cardboard gear. And I sent him like a stack of relics from the Dwayne Johnson, just because like in the, like that was my flesh, just like, oh, screw that guy. Right, that right, 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 right. Totally wasn't the right response. Yeah. Uh, and so that was that. And of course, since then, multiple videos have come out and we've decided. Yeah, but since, but since then, yeah. So let's talk about that for a second because you, you, you ha- you're a better man than me. <laughs> In that I sense. That. Because, because I, I just, I, I don't know, man. I, 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 there was a lot of content that came out after that. So, so the original video came out 72 hours later, you post your response. And then there was still a slew of videos that came out after that. And you didn't respond to any of those. After yeah. you put out that that response video that you did, what was your thought process there? It's like, listen, I'm done with this. So I'm just moving on. Or was there was there some just you just didn't want to deal with it anymore? How, how come there was no responses after that? Well, I think folks that were close to me uh, and then that know me really well were just ins- encouraging me saying, hey, look, yeah, t- take a deep breath. Yeah. you you are held accountable to a higher standard than some random content creator right don't don't even like think about them being the ones that judge you uh you know what you do you know how you treat people like let that yeah. be let that be what people see uh mm-hmm. and so our we just wanted to be slow to speak it, yeah we just wanted to be slow to speak. That, that was our approach let's just be slow to speak let's let it play out uh not to mention in the midst of all that for two or three weeks i mean not one person reached out to us saying, Hey, do you want to talk about this on our show? Mm. Uh, and you know, you and I talked about it a little bit and I told you, I didn't think it'd be good, but yeah. n- not one person reached out until we mentioned it on Twitter. Like, Hey, everyone's <laughs> making these accusations, but no one's reaching out to these guys. Yeah. 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 So again, it was totally fine because we didn't really want to talk about it. Honestly, we wanted it to play out and we wanted to, we were going to treat people the right way. And freely admit where we, where we made a mistake or yeah. if we made a mistake yeah and that's fair no. and 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 to me that's the best way to put it to, to put it to bed right is why why continue to 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 fan somebody else's flame for that kind of stuff yeah. right especially if there's i mean okay like <laughs> I, I often feel like uh, and, and you guys have said have been pretty big uh, proponents of this is that the, obviously the negative side is always going to get the most um you know but ultimately you got you got to let it fan out you got you got to let that fire die out on its own and, and eventually it will when it has no more steam right yeah um and i think that's kind of what's that's kind of what's happened however <laughs> the cards so after all this nonsense the cards go out you say hey i'm sending these off to psa to be really authenticated um and you send them off they come back as you revealed in the video yeah that they both came back as 100 percent authentic According to PSA, uh, PSA, JSA, or uh, PSA DNA? PSA DNA. PSA DNA comes back completely authentic. Uh, how does that feel? Like, what, what is that? I mean, like, what was good? Because you called me when that happened, and I was yeah. losing my mind. I can't, yeah. I don't want to repeat some of the things I was saying. <laughs> Probably not family friendly. But yes, yeah, you know, we try to keep it PG 13 around here. But I mean, that, that had to have been like, look at this, man, all this over what? Right. Yeah. You know, when it was all first off, PSA takes forever to get stuff back to you, but they surprisingly were pretty quick on this one, even with the DNA stuff. So, so props to them. Um, I think some of the other channels did a PSA quick opinion on this one as well. And they said that was fake. I don't even know what everybody did. I didn't even watch all the videos. Um, but there was a there was a shadow of doubt thinking, okay, maybe Rick got screwed in this deal, right? And then we brought the fake autos and we we listed them and, th- and that's that. Uh, and then I, you know, I had eBay threaten to suspend my well, they they suspended my account and then they threatened to suspend it longer because people were complaining that I had sold this auto and that PSA had run a quick opinion on the auto and like they found that we'll it was get into fake. that in a second because that's and my I was big- like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Over a card that never sold, that's right. getting authenticated right now. So when it came back and I opened the box, we were eating dinner as a family and FedEx rings the bell and I go walk over there and get, I actually wasn't even thinking about it. What is even on top of mind for me? Um, I opened the, opened the door, FedEx came and I was like, I looked at the label. I'm like, oh, it's a box. This is yeah. good. Yeah. It's a small PSA <laughs> box. It's even yeah. better. And I open it and I'm thinking, and I, and I just shook it there and the boys were watching and uh, my wife is like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, let me hear if there's a slab in there. And I shook it and I'm like, oh, 
there's a slab. There's something clanking in there. Man, my heart's pacing, and I and I open it up, and not only is the main one real, the one that the started all the mess, one that we didn't even list that we were just gonna keep was real. Like they were both authentic, and I'm like, uh, I mean, my wife's there with the camera on me because she can't believe how happy I am, and she's happy, right? Because she knows, right? She knows how the story. hard we work to do this stuff and how yeah. how we treat people. Uh, the kids were were celebrating. It was just a fun moment. That's awesome. Because it just felt like, you know what? We were standing on trust that we had with somebody. Uh, and and it prevailed. And it prevailed. And it yeah. prevailed. So yeah, the good the good story prevailed in this instance, yeah. right? I, I I said it in different words when you and I were talking, but that's <laughs> that's the PG version. Is that the good story prevailed, right? And yeah. and like you said, th th it could have very well gone the opposite way, also, right? They could have not been authenticated. Yeah. And then at that point, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that somebody got duped, right? Yeah. And hey, it is what it is. You sell millions of cards in a year. Yeah. It's bound to happen, right? I mean, it's, it's almost, almost uh, what do they call it? Occupational hazard, right? That yeah. somebody's going to try and those that are really good might slip through, right? Yeah. And it is what it is. But the biggest piece of all of this, right? that we took away from it. And you and I had a good conversation about this when uh, when you called me. Yeah. Was two things. Number one, PSA quick opinion services, as well as BGS's quick opinion services, are absolutely worthless, <laughs> in my opinion. And this is me talking. They are absolutely worthless because what are you getting, right? What are you getting other than you know, just somebody looking at a JPEG of a JPEG of a JPEG of a picture or something and then going, mm, questionable. Questionable? Well, no shit, it's questionable. We have questions. What, what we're coming to you for is answers, right? And, and, yeah. and you tell me that it's questionable? Well, I know it's questionable. That's why I'm, that's why I'm paying you the $10, right? To, to, to tell me whether or not my question can be answered. Is it or is it not, right? And if you can't do that, then the service is worthless, in my opinion. Now, in this case, you didn't send it to PSA for the quick opinion, but the guy who who originally won the auction sent it to Beckett for the quick opinion. Yeah, they probably. rendered it unable to authenticate. Uh, some people online, I think, did the PSA quick opinion as well with the same results, right? So PSA also, underneath the guise of the quick opinion, also said that could not be authenticated. Then you send it in and it gets authenticated, right? So then what is that opinion really worth? It's not worth anything. Yeah. Because even, even PSA can go back and go, e even if somebody tries to claim, well, hold on. I, I, I asked for a quick opinion. You said no. I sent it in. You authenticated it. Can I get my $10 back? It, it, it's very easy for them to go, well, no, no, no. That was, just, that was just a quick opinion. You know, we just gave you a quick opinion and you sent it in, which is good. That's what we want you to do. And, and, and here you go, right? I mean, I, I, am I off anywhere there, Ty? Because I, I just, I can't, in my mind, frame it any way in which either of those services add any value whatsoever to any transaction. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was already a lot of lot of doubt around the credibility of the quick opinion. I mean, we, I, I never would send something there thinking this is going to be the source of truth, but this puts a massive hole in the bucket of yeah. reason. It, I mean, you can't get much bigger in scale than this card. Right. Uh, and for for multiple people to send it out to get opinion and all of them to come back as fake or as, as not likely to authenticate and then for it to authenticate, to me, just says that, I mean, it's just a waste of money. It really is. <laughs> it's just a waste of money. <laughs> So uh, I, I think I think the the between you and I we can agree that we both feel that that service is useless, right? It's useless. It doesn't bear any fruit. It's not. It's not. Um, it doesn't add any value at all yeah. in any transaction. I don't think that anybody could could actually, like I said, get any value out of that. Yeah. So that leads that leads me to my second biggest kaboom issue in all of this, is that you who have a very large YouTube uh, a store on, on eBay, were, you were in jeopardy of losing your store, right? 
And the reason why you were in jeopardy of losing that store or getting it canceled for a significant amount of time, which let's face yeah, it, I, that's yeah, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be that sensationalist. I, I would say they they threatened to suspend it for multiple days. But still, lost yeah. revenue, right? Yeah. I mean, you're going to lose revenue no matter what. Totally. Yeah. And, but it it was that that was a possibility because of the fact that PSA does a scan of eBay auctions yeah. using the same people that I would assume they're going to use for these quick opinions, which we've already agreed on. It's completely worthless. And they use that same resource to scan eBay listings and provide eBay a weekly report of all of the auctions that they deem as unable to authenticate. Mm -hmm. And it's with that list that eBay hands out infractions. And yeah. if you get too many of those, they can shut down your store or they can suspend your store or they can essentially help make you lose revenue. I have a big problem with that. Yeah. Because you're taking you're taking a tool and a resource that is not useful or not adding any value at all and then using that to hand out infractions against people who could potentially be using eBay as a way to make a living. Yeah. Uh, and and potentially putting people's revenue streams, you know, in jeopardy because of a service that is complete crap. Yeah. Now, prior to prior to you and I talking about this, I had no idea that PSA was even connected with um, eBay in that sense or in any sense at all. I didn't think that they had any connection. Were you aware of PSA ever like having any connection with eBay at all in 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 that way? I would no in this way no no and and the language they used to me was that this this item showed up on a report they get from PSA Quick Opinion as unlikely not genuine, mm. uh, and they and they take those you know cases very you know, serious and they, and they remove those items and they provide the the links or whatever for a seller to go and get them authenticated, uh, and then when you get an infraction or you get multiple people complaining about something, which in this case I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the minions went over and complained uh, about stuff. Is it to me that this is the most important thing in all of this to me? Is like you have somebody who is selling 30, 40,000 transactions a year, uh, you know, at a 99.5% success rate, positive rate, right? Like you're mm -hmm. going to get people that complain. I get that. It's part of the deal. Right. Uh, but to get an email on a Sunday morning, like, hey, we're we're going to suspend you for five days because of this infraction from a PSA quick opinion. It's like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. I, I've completed 30, tra 30,000 transactions this year. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the email I'm going to get. That's where you're going to die. Being authenticated right now with PSA that we don't even know that I pulled off that no one bought like that. This is just the frustrating part. Now you're getting me a, a, a round up. Get all fired up. Let's go. I, I, I'm a big eBay advocate. Yeah. I, I've represented right. eBay. We've had them as a sponsor in the show, and I and I love eBay. eBay is the number one marketplace in the world. The number for one reason, place. but they have got to stop not taking care of their sellers. Mm -hmm. This is a case of a, a seller should have been given the benefit of the doubt that well, this dude has put everything into this. He's yeah. built a crazy store, and this hat. That's not just me. It's other people that go through this too. Sellers need to be the ones that get priority on eBay because that's what drives revenue and that's what drives success and growth of eBay. Uh, and that's why people in the sports car world are like, uh, yeah, I'll go to my slabs. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. go to Com C. Uh, yeah, I'll go over here. Uh, because they realize those platforms are trying to take care of the seller. So this was a, oh my goodness, how right. are you not? And, and then uh, to top it all off, the PSA quick opinion, when PSA <laughs> authenticated it, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my gosh, guys. <laughs> I wonder, so, is there any way that you can contact somebody on eBay and go, hey, listen, remember that remember that card that you guys said that PSA said and you guys were going to block my store for a few days? Well, guess what? Yeah, I will. And I, and I know some guys over there. And like I said, I, I will I will stand by eBay. And I know eBay will, is figuring things out. And I and I want I want them to be a growing marketplace because that's good for all of us. Yeah, but of this was definitely not a good play on their part. It wasn't I don't think they handled it the right way. Kind of. Yeah. In the moment, yeah, no, I I agree with you, man, and I and, and again, this is, it's funny because like I, I have just gone through something very similar with some autographs that I purchased 
that came back and all that not you know not able to authenticate so it was kind of fresh in my mind and i'm like man that that is you know for you to get that response and then for you <laughs> for you to ultimately send them in and get them authenticated uh you know like i said the, the good story prevailed right and, and ultimately you know ultimately this is going to be this is going to be a learning experience for everybody in my opinion right because man yeah. did they you know, everybody flocked to that to, to to those videos right and everybody pitchfork and torch in hand was ready to go to war and and here you are with two the two cards in question or the one card in question really fully authenticated by one of the and i've always said that e, that, that psa's authentication process is psa dna top top notch totally right? the number one place that you want to go to if you have any uh you know in person autographs that you have acquired yourself or whatever you feel that they're you feel good enough about the story behind them to send them in to get them authenticated there's no other place to go that's where i went you know i spent my 500 bucks to send you know dozen cards over there to get them to get them authenticated right and i did that because there's no better place to go i mean you can argue bgs as well right but you know when you're when you when you want top you know top notch top dollar that's that's where you go and and yeah. in this case it just like i said i don't think i'm i don't think i have any issues with psa's authentication process as a whole i have an issue with their quick opinion and yeah. i think that's i think that's the biggest cash grab and it's completely useless and it brings zero value and i think this story is a perfect example of why right but oh, yeah I, I agree man and then you know i think it's important this is a good lesson for everyone in the content world right you you don't need to believe everything you hear yeah, yeah exactly. uh, you know you, you need to take a deep breath and uh process things on your own and stop just believing what's fed to you yeah um i know that's not easy to hear and it, yeah, everyone no. wants to be entertained they, they love entertainment cheap cheap entertainment especially when it when it knocks other people um but if you want to entertain it just go watch chasing cardboard or just go watch a real show go watch a show that exactly we put it we put effort and sweat into go watch yeah. that yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that, the original that, thought into. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or come watch somebody like me that's going to crap on PSA every day. <laughs> oh, yeah, go watch Omar. Go watch it. Go watch Omar. If you're not subscribed to Omar right now, yeah, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> yeah, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Dude, I'm so bad. I'm so bad at at like asking for subscribe. Like you know, people just like I'm so bad at that. And and that's that's the reason why like my channel's been pretty stagnant. Like the last you know maybe eight months or so just I, I don't i don't know man i i i, I don't ask for that because i don't expect that for some reason but it's tough you know trying to put out some content that you're happy about that you're proud of that you know that you feel good about and yeah man it's easy it's easy to grasp at that what, what did he do over there oh yeah screw that guy hit record hey did you see what that guy over there did that guy's a scammer Everybody, let's go, you know, that's, that's, those are quick grabs, you know? Yeah. And unfortunately, it's out there. What are we going to do about it, you know? Be yourself, right? Know who that's you're right. accountable to. Do the right thing every single time. And uh, it, it all works out in the end. It's, let me let advice. me ask you, um, wrapping up, any uh, fantasy leagues this year for you? You a big fantasy guy? Uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah? Three, three or four. Wow. Okay. I only have time for one. <laughs> <laughs> is it like a family thing or is it you guys did like one of those you've done for years that's put some cash in and let's go yeah okay yeah, yeah. a little more than i care to admit in case my wife is watching but yeah. <laughs> in case you mean she yeah. doesn't maybe watch this yeah, yeah you know she, she may she, you know. <laughs> I, I just don't want to incriminate thing. myself too bad you know? <laughs> <laughs> how many how many digits does it have in it uh three okay all right so it's not little... that bad yeah all it's right. not that bad i've seen worse i've seen worse i used to i i I knew a guy who was in finance who him and his buddies like would hire somebody. Oh boy. To, to, to be the commissioner of the league because like they, a neutral third party. Cause there was so yeah, much money. Yeah, involved. Wow. They, they were, they were in the five figures. Yeah. Yeah. It was that. Let me tell you something. Those, those trade vetoes would garner some serious, serious anger. Like if, and and, and then the commissioner would have to like step in on that because it's like, you know, it was 
it was it was gnarly to watch like the text message threads and stuff like oh man those guys are insane <laughs> and of course those guys are all big finance you know yeah. nothing but big bravado alpha male type guys that are just huffing and puffing all the time and yeah it's pretty serious those guys get pretty gnarly with that and most of those guys were like in three or four leagues at a time it's nuts. yeah you uh, done all I, your drafting already yeah yeah two of the two of the three are done nice nice i'm going it's, all in on Bajan. Really? I'm doing it. I, I hate drafting rookie running backs, but I'm doing it. I'm going all in on him and all in on Justin Justin Herbert this year. So I'm I'm going I'm going in on uh uh I'm trying I'm trying to think who who I was trying to pull. So I'm going in on uh, I'm going all in on Josh Allen. Okay. Um he's he's been my number one pick on everything. And then um uh Derrick Henry. Oh, okay. I think nice. I think I think he is just the solid, the solidest of solid work workhorses that you could ever ask for. Um, and then everything else, I just kind of let it play out. If I can snag those two guys, you're in. Uh, you're good. I'm pretty happy. Yeah. And then uh, in this last draft, believe it or not, I snagged Brandon Ayuk in the eleventh round. If you could believe that. Yeah. Uh, wow. He's he's slipping through some cracks, man. Are you uh, are you an auction guy or are you a, a snake guy? What do you snake? Yeah, okay. snake. Yeah, we're we're snake. And then I I had a pretty good spot this year. I was in the eighth pick, uh, in a twelve in a in a ten man uh, snake draft. So I got a good couple good double shots, and then you know some time to analyze and see kind of where everything lands. And then boom, boom, I get two more double shots, and so it's pretty good. Not too Heck bad. Yeah. Heck yeah. Too uh, bad. You'll appreciate this because we grew up in the same era. We've been going back and watching some of the '90s flicks that we loved growing up. I'm a big Steve Martin fan. Okay. Uh, we watched Father of the Bride one and two with the kids. Classic. And then la- last night we set the kids down and we watched Runaway Bride. Uh, Runaway Bride. Julia Roberts, Richard Julia Roberts. Gere. Okay. Yeah. I Man, know. there's some there's some classic movies in the '90s. Even the rom coms are just like great family flicks. I love it. Runaway Bride. Richard Gere. Richard Gere, right? Yeah, Richard Gere, Julia Roberts. Just add them to your list. They're good to go back and watch. Yeah. The I've, Father I, of the I, one and two, man. Cheaper by the dozen with Steve. Steve Martin is the goat. Steve Martin is the goat. A lot of people don't appreciate him. You, yeah. you appreciate this. Today, I started watching, and this is horrible, because I'm not the biggest movie buff, but I love movies. Okay. I'm watching Titanic right now for the first time. Never seen it. Not doing what? it. Not, no, no, you said not doing it. it for the first time. What are you talking about? You you're not you say you just no you no dice no. on Titanic. Nope. What? Can't do it. Now you want to talk about a goat. DiCaprio's the goat. Favorite DiCaprio movie right now. What do you go with? Oh, for sure. Um Inception. Okay. Oh, well, mm, Carter is pretty good. Well, well, catch me if you can. That's good. Tom Hanks was amazing in that too. Tom Hanks is the man. Tom yeah. Hanks is the man. Yep. Well, brother. <laughs> I appreciate you chatting with me, chatting with yep. me about this. Um, I appreciate that I was one of the first phone calls. That means a lot to me. Um, and, and I'm glad that we got an opportunity to kind of talk through this whole story, talk about what has come of it, and then ultimately, you know, serving this up as as kind of like a summary of this whole thing and just, just putting it to bed um, yep. because that's that's important. I don't think I don't think that happens a lot, right? The pitchforks and the and the torch happen all the time. That gets a lot of clicks, but then I don't think that the 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 end of it, which nine times out of ten vindicates people, sure, um, ever happens. Not only in yeah. our hobby, but just in media in general. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you, um, you know, reaching out and saying, "Hey, man, we have we've been back and forth trying to get uh, on with each other again. We just." schedules have been crazy but yeah. this time this this is this is what's going on and and we i want to use this as an opportunity to to jump back on so i appreciate that a lot man and uh of course i i've told you before that and i'll tell you again man i respect the way you approach things and uh, and i love your channel and you're one of the few that i watch religiously so uh, <laughs> yeah they, they, they've been kind of slow lately they've been kind of slow lately but all right you know, we'll, ebb and flow we'll, baby yeah <laughs> yeah that's life right life. Well, I had, I had to take some time off, man. I was getting too fat. That, that was my problem. And so I you're looking to... pretty good. I mean, if you stood up, I think I'd be really impressed. But yeah, don't do that. 
Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that because I have a shirt on, but I can't guarantee you that the, that I have the rest. You know, so we're not going to. Oh, <laughs> no, I cannot. I can't not unsee that now, man. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man, good stuff. You're that yeah. remote worker, aren't you? You're, you're one of those guys that's had a horrible Zoom experience because you forgot yeah. you didn't have your pants on. Jacket and tie, and the <laughs> but like nothing. Slippers so and that's good. it. <laughs> so good. Good stuff, man. Well, again, brother, thank you, yep. man. Congratulations on everything that you guys are doing over at Chasing Cardboard. Thank you. I absolutely love it. I think everybody loves it. The subscriber count and the watch count continues to go upwards. And uh, I'm just extremely excited to continue to watch what you guys put out on uh, every Thursday, every other Thursday, right? Uh, Wednesday or Thursday, but yeah, every other week. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Anything, last words for you, brother, before we wrap it up? That's That's it, man. Keep chasing. Keep chasing, everybody. Appreciate y'all watching. Remember, hit the links down at the bottom for all of the backstories, all the links to all the subscribers, the links to the channel for Chasing Cardboard. We'll catch you guys in the next video. Love y'all. Peace.